global beast tonight. Restrictions again. Drastic action across the globe taken as the new variant spreads. Airport chaos. Omicron now detected in several countries leading to travel restrictions. Unmasking trolls. New Australian legislations could allow social media users to sue online bullies. Skate away. The iconic Red Square Ice Rink opens with colourful shows. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. Very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage with the updates on the COVID pandemic. The new COVID-19 variant Omicron is setting off alarm bells around the world. Countries have sealed their borders in an attempt to stop the strain arriving on their shores. Not much is known about it yet, but some experts have speculated it could be even more infectious than the Delta strain and could be more resistant to vaccines. A new variant of concern has emerged. South Africa first sounded the alarm on this new strain to the WHO on November 24th. And already at least 13 countries have detected the strain within their borders, including Botswana, Britain, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands, Australia and Israel. The strain has also landed in North America, with Canada detecting its first two cases on Sunday local time. There's still so much unknown about this variant. Some experts say it could be more evasive to vaccine protection and more transmissible than other strains. Doctors in South Africa, though, have reported very mild symptoms among their Omicron patients. Most suffered from fatigue and muscle pain that lasted for a few days, while none as of yet have reported some of the other COVID-19 symptoms like a loss of smell or taste. Many countries are scrambling to update prevention guidelines to counter this new threat. Israel enforced one of its toughest measures yet, sealing off its borders to all foreign nationals for two weeks. The European Union has restricted entry from seven countries in southern Africa, while South Korea and the U.S. have targeted travel restrictions for eight countries in the region. There are also concerns that South Korea's current domestic PCR tests are not effective at detecting the Omicron variant. The travel restrictions aim to slow its arrival in the country. Australia will review its plans to reopen borders to skilled migrants and students from the 1st of December. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said after the country reported its first new cases of the Omicron coronavirus variant. Australia's plans for a wider reopening this week have been thrown into doubt amid concerns over the new Omicron coronavirus variant. The country detected its first cases of Omicron in several states, among some who travelled from southern Africa over the weekend. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said the country's National Security Committee will meet Monday. We'll get the best information, we'll work together, we'll make sensible, practical, balanced decisions. And my, my key message to people is just to remain calm, do what you're doing, uh, follow all the same usual procedures, get your booster shot, get your second vaccine. Uh, let's get that um, vaccination rate up over 90 per cent. We're on track for that. Australia shut its borders for more than 18 months until the start of November. Its largest cities, Sydney and Melbourne, have since tightened their travel rules again, with all international travellers required to quarantine for three days. Australia was poised to allow skilled migrants and students into the country on Wednesday. The United States is preparing for the Omicron variant with new travel restrictions for foreign visitors from South Africa and seven surrounding countries effective tomorrow. President Biden held an emergency meeting with members of his COVID response team and Dr. Fauci. With the holiday travel season already underway, the U.S. is bracing for the new Omicron variant. New cases just confirmed in Ontario, Canada late today. President Biden meeting with members of his COVID-19 response team and chief medical advisor, Dr. Fauci. Clearly is giving indication that it has the capability of transmitting rapidly. That's the thing that's causing us now to be concerned, but also to put the pressure on ourselves right. now to do something about our preparation for this. Tomorrow, new U.S. travel restrictions for foreign visitors from South Africa and seven surrounding countries take effect. American citizens and lawful permanent residents are exempt. Today, public health officials trying to contain not just the variant, but fear. There's no reason to panic, but there's a great reason to go get boosted. Today, U.S. officials spoke with their South African colleagues. This doctor was one of the first to sound the alarm. Currently, there's no reason for panicking 
as we don't see severely ill patients. So it started with the younger generation and the most predominant clinical complaint is severe fatigue for one or two days with then the headache and the body aches and pain. Authorities say it's too early to know whether the U.S. will need to impose new lockdowns or mandates to fight Omicron. Air travel can continue to be safe if protocols are followed. With COVID cases already rising in the U.S., demand for tests spiked last week ahead of Thanksgiving. One of the nation's largest labs says it should be ready for the holidays. The PCR test does detect the new variant. Israel became the first country to ban entry to all foreign visitors as Australia and several European nations confirmed cases of the new Omicron coronavirus variant. Since it was first detected in South Africa, the variant has sparked global concern with countries rushing to implement measures to stem in infection spread. Authorities are on high alert at Schiphol International Airport in Amsterdam. On Friday, COVID-19 tests were made mandatory for all passengers arriving on flights from South Africa. With no risks taken of the spread of the newly detected Omicron variant, commuters found themselves stuck at the airport for hours. Of the 600 passengers, 61 tested positive for the virus and had to go into quarantine. Dutch authorities believe the Omicron variant is likely behind a number of those infections. Fear is starting to mount across Europe, with cases now detected in Germany, Belgium, the UK, Italy and Czech Republic, while another 50 suspected cases are being analysed. The World Health Organization has expressed concern about the variant, which experts say could be highly transmissible and potentially resistant to existing vaccines. We need to figure out if the vaccines need to be modified and all that stuff can be done fairly quickly because the vaccines are, you know, some of them are, are easily modifiable. Pfizer and Moderna have announced that it would take roughly three months to modify their vaccines to combat the Omicron variant. The world's major manufacturers of COVID-19 vaccines said that they are working to quickly investigate and adapt their shots to a new and highly mutated strain of the virus. BioNTech said Friday it's expecting more data in the coming weeks on a worrying new COVID-19 variant first detected in South Africa that will help determine whether the company needs to rework its vaccine. The Omicron variant has raised global alarm. Countries around the world have tightened border controls because of it, and scientists are scrambling to see if vaccines currently in use against the coronavirus still work. Pfizer and BioNTech said that if necessary, they expect to be able to ship a new vaccine targeting the variant in approximately 100 days. Moderna said in a statement it's working to advance a booster candidate tailored to the new variant, testing a higher dose of its existing booster and studying other booster candidates. Meanwhile, Johnson & Johnson said it is also closely monitoring emerging variants and testing the effectiveness of its shot against them. Pfizer and BioNTech have already created versions of their established mRNA-based vaccine to target the so-called Alpha and Delta variants, with clinical trials ongoing. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. French Interior Minister Gerald Damanin met with his counterparts from Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium and European Commission, excluding Britain. Let's cross over to Akbar and World News Special Correspondent Chetana Dharmaratna reporting from Normandy in France. For more, Chetana. Yes, Shanali. The meeting followed the death of 27 migrants trying to cross the English Channel, the worst strategy on record in one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson wrote to President Emmanuel Macron setting out five steps the two countries could take to deter migrants from the, making the previous journey. However, France cancelled an invitation to British Interior Minister Preeti Patel to attend the Calais meeting after Johnson published the letter on Twitter. The road deepened a rift between the two countries which are also at larger heads over Post Brexit trading rules and fishing rights. Speaking after meeting, uh, Darmin said France is ready for a serious discussion with Britain on issues relating to illegal migrations but will not be held hostage to London's domestic politics. He also said Britain had to assume responsibility by making itself less economically attractive or illegal, uh, for illegal migrants. Back to you, Shanali. 
All right, thank you. That was other than a world news special correspondent Chetan Dharmaratna reporting from Normandy in France. The Australian government is set to introduce some of the toughest anti-troll legislation in the world, but experts say its focus on defamation will not help curb the rapes of online bullying or cyber hate. The Australian government will be able to access the personal information of social media users if they post defamatory comments. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said on Sunday the country will introduce legislation that would compel platforms such as Twitter and Facebook to hand over that data. Canberra has been examining the responsibility of social media in publishing defamatory material. The new announcement comes after Australia's highest court ruled publishers can be held liable for public comments on online forums. That ruling caused some news companies like CNN to deny Australians access to their Facebook pages. The new legislation will also introduce a complaints mechanism, allowing users to require a platform to take down potentially defamatory material. If that content is not withdrawn, a court process could force a social media platform to provide details of the commenter. The visit of EU and NATO's top officials to Lithuania was dominated by the Belarus migrant crisis and Russia's military build-up near Ukraine. EU and NATO leaders promised to step up cooperation against so-called hybrid threats on a visit to Lithuania on Sunday. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen reaffirmed her commitment to tripling border management funds for Latvia, Poland and Lithuania. Lithuania has been responding to this hybrid attack in a humane and firm way. And the European Union continues to stand by your side. Lithuania is already benefiting from 37 million euros in emergency assistance. But as I announced earlier this week, we are tripling the EU border management funds for Lithuania, Poland and Latvia to 200 million euros overall this year and next year. The talks were dominated by the Belarus-Poland border crisis and Russia's military build-up near Ukraine. They come ahead of a meeting of NATO foreign ministers later this week. NATO Chief Jens Stolenberg said combat-ready battle troops were stationed in the Baltic region for the first time alongside air policing and naval forces. The EU has accused Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko of using people fleeing unstable countries to destabilize the bloc in revenge for sanctions targeting him over a contested election last year. South Korea enjoyed a rather warm autumn, but with the season coming to an end, people should prepare to get their thick winter coats out. After widespread rain early in the week, temperatures are expected to drop to sub-zero levels. November is coming to an end, and so is autumn. Parks and streets are covered with fallen leaves, filling the atmosphere with late autumn colors. However, the weather is expected to change rapidly in the coming days. Temperatures are forecast to drop below zero degrees Celsius starting December after the country sees rain nationwide on Tuesday. In particular, some regions will see temperatures drop close to minus 10 degrees in midweek after rain on Tuesday. Beginning December, temperatures will drop below zero degrees Celsius as cold air from the north moves south. During the first week, morning temperatures will drop below minus 5 degrees Celsius in the central and northern inland areas, including Seoul. This winter in particular is expected to see the early arrival of a cold wave and temperatures are forecast to fluctuate severely. Currently, La Nina is developing and when this happens, temperatures during the winter tend to be lower than usual. Also because there is little RTC ice, we're expecting a very cold December and January this winter. The country's precipitation level is likely to decrease compared to previous years. However, with the cold wave approaching, experts predict that there will be significant regional variations, with heavy snowfall expected in regions on the west coast as well as on islands. Thousands of demonstrators around the world took part in protests to highlight violence against women, with Rome and Istanbul at the forefront. Thousands of women in Rome on Saturday protested about violence against women. It's part of the global 16 Days campaign, with demonstrations against gender-based violence. Campaigners denounce what they consider to be an institutional policy hostile to females, the LGBTQIA community and those vulnerable to the economic, social and health crisis. Meanwhile, in Turkey, the police broke up the Women's Rights March in Istanbul with tear gas and rubber bullets. 
The protesters were denouncing the recent rise in violence against women. According to an advocacy group called We Will Stop Femicide, 18 females were killed by men and 19 others found dead under suspicious circumstances just in the last month. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A court in Myanmar is expected to deliver a verdict of ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi tomorrow for allegedly breaching COVID-19 restrictions during a general election campaign. Iranian says reaching a nuclear deal would be a good for all sides but vowed not to back down as the country's government is set to meet with world powers in Vienna. Schools reopened in New Delhi today even as the pollution levels in the Indian capital remained a cause of concern for the government and the residents. Virgil Abloh fashion's highest profile black designer and the creative mind behind Louis Vuitton's men's collection died in Chicago at age 41 following a two-year battle with a rare form of cancer. A massive 7.5 magnitude earthquake shook the remote Amazon region of northern Peru. While the earthquake caused damage to homes near the epicenter, no casualties have been reported. Japan said it would close its borders to foreigners as the world's third largest economy joined Israel in taking the toughest measures against the new coronavirus variant, Omicron. And finally tonight, Russia's famous ice rink in the Red Square opened for the 16th time with a colourful show featuring 2006 Olympics winner Tatyana Navka. The rink is a seasonal addition to the famed location where the Soviet Union's founder Vladimir Lenin is buried and has delighted skaters every winter since 2005. The rink is expected to be open for visitors till spring but has limitations for capacity due to the coronavirus pandemic. Due to a built-in cooling system, the rink can still hold ice even if the temperature rises above zero degrees Celsius. Over the years, the Red Square rink has become a beloved point of Moscoviets who want to stake in the very heart of the city. Country's President Vladimir Putin plays hockey games at the rink near the Kremlin almost every winter. In case you have missed any of the stories we aired tonight, you can re-watch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.